And joining me now is Ian Lawrence, General Secretary of the Probation Service Union, NAPO. I mean, it's, it's pretty damning, isn't it? Failings in his case at every stage. How can this happen in the probation service? Well, firstly, thanks for inviting me, Jane, and I would send out our heartfelt thoughts to the uh, families of the victims. Can't imagine the anger and grief they're going through right now. The failings, uh, of which there are many as identified in report, and we've yet to really look at this in detail to see which of them are absolutely accurate, but in general terms, I can say we absolutely agree the vast majority of those recommendations made by the inspector. It points up systemic failure uh, of the service, the probation service, because those issues highlighted in the report are to be found just about everywhere across the probation service, and I lay the blame for that firmly at government's door. But the blame was also set out very clearly to the people involved. There have been disciplinary proceedings. Two members of staff have faced disciplinary proceedings over the case. Yes, there may be issues within the service, but the fact of the matter is people weren't doing their job properly, were they? Well, those matters are still under process and there are certain aspects of the findings that I'm sure we want to look at. Well, well let's look at some of them, because the review, the review, the review was, is, was published yesterday. It's, it's, mm. all been, it's all there out in the open. Um, probation officers didn't visit the property, didn't, didn't conduct domestic abuse inquiries, didn't take into, into account past domestic abuse claims. Why, why would a probation officer not do that? Simply because the majority, vast majority of our probation members are massively, massively overworked and under stress. The report also highlights the amount of staff vacancies uh, both in uh, the Swindon office and in the East Midlands, people at breaking point, managers having to cover 30 people in their team and be expected to look in detail at the uh, requirements as identified by the inspector. So no, none of our members go to work deliberately not to properly supervise a client. Let me make that clear. And we warned about these types of incidents seven years ago when the government part privatised probation stupid decision. We warned that more people would die and it was worse when the private sector uh, companies were running probation as well. So our, our warnings unfortunately have been proven correct. I'm not surprised that these cases, rare though they are, do happen and it's shocking. Mm. The review also said that the officers, a lot of them were, were inexperienced that were dealing with these cases, lacked professional curiosity. Are the wrong people being employed? Not the right people are being employed, but, you know, a lot of them don't stay around because of the reasons I've just highlighted. We have 1,500 on average new probation officers coming into the service. I have many reports of them walking out of the door after four or five weeks because of the uh, issues we've covered, the overwork, the stress, the lack of experienced staff. And let's be, f let's be fair, experienced staff are now starting to retire, so the expertise is being lost. And we need urgent action by this government. And I want the Justice Secretary to offer me a face-to-face -face meeting to absolutely explain why probation is underfunded and why these things are being allowed to happen. But again, it's about the ability of our officers to cope under systemic problems of workloads and vacancies and stress. And yes, none of us, as I said earlier, none of our members intend for poor supervision to take place on the client. These cur currencies are still thankfully rare well, that won't cut much ice with the uh, victims' families, as I said earlier. Indeed. Ian Lawrence, uh, the General Secretary of the Probation Service Union, thank you very much for joining us.